Good evening. We're glad that you're here again for our Sunday night uh, church service. We are Sunday night live tonight, and uh, it's been a blessing. Many of you have been able to be on and uh, be a part of our Wednesday night time of prayer. And then uh, this morning, 930, our adult Bible study and typically our teen uh, classes, as well as uh, our Sunday school for the children. We all uh, were able to uh, do a little something different during our 930 hour. If you missed it, I want to encourage you to go back and watch it. And then this morning for our 1040 uh, service, uh, we had uh, just wonderful uh, time focusing and thinking on together and how we can come together. We are in the boat together. And if you had a chance to see that, hopefully that was a, a blessing to you. And uh, tonight, Sunday nights, we're specifically going to be doing messages on faith. So we're going to start our service off with 486. I know many of you do not have this, but the song is called Faith is the Victory. Faith is the Victory. Maybe some of you want to quickly try and look that up on a computer or on your phone or something. Uh, but I'm going to have Daniel come up. He's going to lead us. And uh, hopefully this song will be a blessing to you. And uh, you'll be able to at least join in. Some of you are familiar with it. If you know the chorus, sing with Daniel. Lead us 486. Faith is the Victory. Death along the hills of night, the Christian soldiers rise and press the battle near the night, to fill the golden skies. Against the fallen hills, we know the Lord has turned the door. It is the victory we know. The road becomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love. I swear the word of God. We tread the road the saints of love. The shouts of pride and God. My faith in life will grow. It's best when God will let me feel. The faith by which they conquer now is still a shining sail. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glory is victory that overcomes the world. On every hand of foe we find your love in better ways. The tents of peace we left behind the Lord for two days. Salvation till we reach the end, the truth for three of them. The earth shall tremble, need for truth, and echo call a shout. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Typically in our service, we would greet one another. So as we did this morning, go ahead and find somebody on there as you're commenting. Maybe welcome somebody, find somebody new. Say hello for those of you who are joining and watching us here tonight. And it will just take a couple seconds here. Matt, you can go ahead and play through that and we'll come back and sing our final verse. <laughs>
Right before Pastor comes, hopefully that was a blessing to you at home, just hearing the song, the words of it. Maybe some of you are familiar with it, some of you it might be new, uh, but Pastor's going to come open us in a word of prayer here tonight. Good evening, we trust us all finds each one of you uh, eager in anticipation for spiritual things, and uh, we uh, meet in a church house as a church. You're part of us here, so just pretend you're sitting here or wherever you are, and uh, uh, your Lord sees us tonight, and let's trust that he'll encourage us tonight and look to him. Let us pray. Our Father, tonight we thank you for your loving care for us. We thank you for the word of God. The same yesterday, today, and forever is our Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. And Father, we thank you for the testing of our faith. We just pray that through this service and as we remind ourselves of your truth through the Holy Spirit, that each one of us would be lifted up, encouraged, and uh, tonight determined that we will raise a flag of victory to you because you are a victor. Thank you that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. Yes. Meet with us, we ask in this service, and everyone in video land, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, again, we're just thankful for many of you who are uh, watching. What we want to do is we want to encourage you to be as interactive as you can. And uh, feel free if you hear a song or words of a song that we're singing or a scripture uh, or a statement throughout. I want to encourage you to go ahead and post that. Put that in there in the comment section. Uh, we want to hear from you. And uh, uh, this morning we had a lot of great feedback of some folks who uh, were able to be uh, tuned in and they thought, a couple had a great testimony on how, uh, you know, they were just going to maybe just kind of uh, sit on their couch or lay in their bed, but they decided to get up, get their Bible and be involved. And we want to try and be as involved as we can with you uh, for this service so that you can get as much as you can and allow the Holy Spirit to work uh, through you. Tonight we're going to, and on Sunday nights, we're going to specifically be singing some scripture songs. And so we want to encourage you, get your Bible out. And the first scripture song is Psalm 136. And verse one. So you can sing with us. Some of you are familiar with a couple of these. And uh, there's no uh, greater way to uh, learn scriptures uh, than to be able to have a song and put a song to it. And a few years back, one of our pianists who now went home to be with the Lord, she put these uh, scriptures uh, to music. And they really have been a blessing. But Psalm 136, verse one, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And then we repeat it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And then we say Psalm 136, verse 1. It goes up a key, and then we go ahead and we sing it again. So join in with us as we sing one Psalm 136 and verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 136, verse 1 again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. For his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 136, verse 1. All right, hopefully you were singing it with us. We're going to do it again. Miss Hannah, if you can get ready to get us started here, let's try it one more time. Wonderful, wonderful scripture song. All that we're going through, we still have a lot to give the Lord thanks for. And what a wonderful truth. His mercy endureth forever. We'll sing it again here, Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. For his mercy endureth some things that uh, and ways that God has been good to you. We just sang about it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. So go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it. Maybe some of you are thankful for your family. Some of you are thankful for your salvation. Uh, right now, we all should be thankful for our health. 
and uh, many different things. So go ahead and uh, and uh, feel free to add some of those as we get ready for our next song, Psalm 37, 4. I'm just going to have Hannah play through it while those of you at home are going ahead and putting some of those comments in of things that you are grateful for and thankful for. We'll give you just a moment or two and uh, continue to add those in, some things that you are grateful for and thankful for. And then uh, as you're adding those in, next scripture song, Psalm 37 and verse number four. Psalm 37 and verse number four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Psalm 37, verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 4, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. I hope you're thankful for God's word. And uh, these are just some simple choruses, but I'm thankful for the powerful truths of God's word. To join in with us, Psalm 37 and verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give me the desires of thy heart again. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give me the desires of Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 4. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Some of you, that's the first time you heard it. We're going to do it one more time. You're starting to get familiar with the chorus, and hopefully you can... Uh, go ahead and join in with us. We'll sing it one more time. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Psalm 37, verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 4, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Wonderful singing. In a few moments, we'll do another one. It's great uh, to have scripture songs. And each Sunday night, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be emphasizing the messages around the word faith. And tonight we're going to look at the faith of Noah. And how many would agree that in times like this, we all definitely need uh, to be able to have our faith and our trust in the Lord. And uh, so I just want to encourage all of us on Sunday nights to be tuning in specifically. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to have available next Sunday night. The specific message will be on the faith of Abraham, the faith of Abraham. And what we're going to do is post for you uh, on our uh, Facebook page, YouTube. We are going to post a devotional for each day, a quick question and some scriptures for you at home to be able to read to prepare your heart for next Sunday night's message. So again, we will add that in and you feel free to uh, copy, on, paste that on your phone, screenshot it, whatever you need to do. Uh, but tonight's message will be specifically on the faith of Noah. And then each day we will have a specific question for you. And we will make sure again, as I said, we will post this for you so that each day you will have a specific scripture reading, preparing your heart for next Sunday night's message as we continue on faith and have a wonderful time of reading scriptures together. 930 this morning for our adult Bible study, a time that we did, uh, we had promises and many of you shared different promises from God's word. And it was just neat to be able to see all the scriptures and all the promises that came in. And we had a chance to read them over and over every Sunday morning at 930. Uh, as we are live, we want to continue to have you involved and share some promises, scriptures from God's word that we can continue to encourage 
and edify each other each other with. One more uh, announcements, actually two more. One is on Wednesday night, our midweek prayer time and Bible study that we typically have every Wednesday night. Uh, and we have our team ministries meet as well as our master's club for sixth grade and under wonderful program to help parents to be able to get engaged and in God's word uh, with with their children. And I want to encourage you, if you uh, haven't been able to be out to that, when we're able to get back and meet together, uh, we have many different things offered like that for the children, the teens, and then our adult Bible study and prayer time. Wednesday night, we will have an interactive time where you can add prayer requests. We're going to ask some of you to be praying for some of those requests that come in. We're going to have times of praise where you can add some praises, some things you're grateful for. And then Wednesday night's message specifically will be how to pray 30 minutes a day, how to pray 30 minutes a day. And we want to encourage you to uh, join in with us. Also, typically we would take an offering at this time. We want to encourage uh, as many of you as possible to be able to currently, you can uh, mail in your check if you want to stop in and drop it in uh, to the church. Uh, you can do that as well. Our online giving platform is set up, as we mentioned this morning, is set up on our end. We're just waiting for verification, and then we'll be able to uh, get word out on how you can give. And we're looking that that will be set up this week. But many of you have already either dropped off mailed in and brought your tithes and your offerings in and we thank you for that and uh, we want to continue to sustain the church here continue to sustain the missionaries that we support and uh, all the many activities and things that we have here to reach our community and we thank many of you who continue to be faithful with your tithes and your offerings so feel free to send that in and uh, this week we will have ready and getting word out to you on when that online giving platform will be available pastor is going to come at this time as we've mentioned faith our emphasis on sunday night is going to be on faith and pastor is going to give us a little encouragement and then we'll come back and uh, have another scripture song that we want you to be involved with at home. And then we'll get ready for our message tonight on the faith of Noah. Thank the Lord for our preacher. He's going to come at this time. Give us a Bible blessing, a Bible blessing on a scripture in, uh, in, in regards to the word faith. The scripture verse... I'd like to share with you tonight is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The best uh, immediate testimony that I can give to you is a little lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 17. You're familiar with the uh, story of David and Goliath. And all of us have Goliath in our lives. And perhaps there's no greater theme than when the big bad guy gets beat by the little guy. So we all know. And right now in our country and in the world, we're facing an invisible uh, thing called this coronavirus. And, uh, God alone has the ability to know that small things and what's going on. So David uh, was a young man of faith and verse 29 says, and David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? And we know the story up to this point was that there were uh, thousands of people on each side of the battle, the God fearing people who were very fearful uh, and the Philistines, who were heathen people, who were bold and brazen, but they were fearful also. And so they sent forth their giant, Goliath. And a young David came to visit his brothers, and he said, what's going on here? You guys acting like there's no God in heaven. And he said, the uh, message of the hour is such that the heathen are looking at you Christians and you people and see if you are any different than them. And so David had come to bring his brothers some food, and he ended up getting in a battle and saying, I'll be the guy that will go and face Goliath. And he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a God in heaven? Is he not alive? So you know in verse number 40 of that chapter, he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones 
of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So here it was, little David, teenage fellow, couldn't even wear any armor, Goliath armored to the kilts, big fellow, giant, David came armed. As he went, reached into that brook, he looked for five, not just stones, he looked for five smooth stones. And you can name the stones that you want to about the Goliaths in your life of faith. But I think that David picked up the first stone and I think he had faith on it. And he was armed with his sling. And David had a vision, just like our, our verses tonight here. Uh, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He had a vision of seeing somehow that God was going to be exalted in this situation and everybody would know that the Lord, he is God. And the faith is not in uh, physical things, but faith is in people who have faith and, and belief in the Bible and that God can move things and prayer moves a hand of God. And so David uh, met the giant, the giant of course laughed him down and uh, David though took that stone of faith. What was his vision? Well his vision was is that God would be exalted. Yeah. His vision was he didn't even see himself as being slain by that giant, but if he was, that was okay because he was on the right side of things. So he saw himself, and uh, but he had a vision, and that was somehow that God would be exalted, the giant would be killed, and so as a result, he had some insight into that whole situation that he wouldn't have had otherwise uh, because he was seeing through the eyes of faith. He saw that if God could slay this guy, God's side would be won, and the victory would be great, and uh, and the, the, the world would know that God, the creator of the universe, he is Lord, and he can work even through a shepherd boy. So he reached into that bag, and I think the first stone he picked out was faith. That's all he needed, wasn't it? And you named the other stones that you might want to have, but he took his sling like this, and of course, you know, the giant went down. David didn't even have a sword. He had to go up and finish the giant off with the, the giant's own sword. But there was a great victory that day. And I'd just like to say that this uh, virus is a giant, but God's people need to have faith. And uh, we need to be praying that uh, God will allow human scientists to find a solution real quick. In the meantime, ask ourselves, what lessons is he teaching us? There's a heathen crowd, maybe some of you listening, have not been acting as though you believe God, you're atheistic, whatever it is. But God is working in your life, and you realize you're not so invincible, and life is so invisible, and it's much bigger than any of us. So let us remember tonight that let's have the vision tonight of faith that as we believe in the Lord, we can hope for cure, we can hope for victory, we can hope for him to work through this situation, and we can see those things could happen if we're in his will and if we can be tools of his, and the evidence of things not seen. We believe there's gonna be victory in the country, That's victory all over, victory in many lives, and faith. And so how many of you do believe that, that there's a God in heaven, he knows all about this, and, and do you believe that, and are you living like it? So let's pray and let's keep believing, let's keep singing, let's keep reading our scriptures, let's keep the joy of the Lord going to each other, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And if you're not saved tonight or you're not committed and dedicated your life uh, to living for the Lord, whose side are you on? Is there not a cause? And uh, we want a victory tonight that you will believe God if you haven't been believing in him. Dear Father, we thank you for faith. Yes. Give us faith. And Lord, we thank you that you are the one that honors our faith. Help us to believe tonight, trust, and walk in you, and protect us, and help both uh, folks, Lord, to live as though they know you're real and not ashamed of you, and to lift up in this world so that the heathen can see there's a God in our lives, even if our life was taken from us. It's a win-win situation because we're in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Pastor, and uh, Bible blessing, what a powerful scripture, and tonight's first message on the faith that we're going to hear in a few moments is the faith of Noah, which is the next verse right after that, and I hope that will be an encouragement to you. We're going to turn in our Bibles to uh, Micah 6, 8. 
Micah 6 8, and I'm going to have uh, my wife Kylie come up. And uh, this is a song we've sang many times with some teens. Remember tonight, we were saying we're going to read, uh, we're going to sing quite a few scripture uh, songs. So we want you to join in with us uh, here with Micah 6 8. So we'll give you a moment just to find it. And uh, Kylie's going to come up and uh, join us here as we sing tonight Micah 6 and verse, uh, verse number verse number 8. This song has a song where the, we want you to, to have some interaction to it, where it has a little bit of repeat, and uh, we want to encourage you to join in uh, with us as we sing this. I'll start off, and then uh, Kylie will, um, she will follow. So uh, if you're at home and uh, you are a guy, you're going to start off with me, and uh, if you're a lady, you're going to start off with, with Kylie, and some of you know it, some of you don't, and if you don't, this will be a first time learning it for you, but an, again, another great scripture song. Uh, Micah 6, 8, and hopefully you'll uh, continue to hold God's word. As we mentioned earlier, Sunday night on these Sunday night uh, live services, we want to sing some scripture songs. And that's something we're going to do every Sunday night. And we hope that this will be uh, another scripture song to be an encouragement to you. It goes like this. And he has shown me. Oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me. Guys with me, he has shown me. Oh man, everybody, what is good and what the Lord requires of me. Guys with me. But to do justly, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. All right, good. So you can see there's a part where I start, and guys, you could join in, and then ladies, you could join in, and then we all come together where it says, "What is good and what the Lord requires of thee." We'll try it again and sing through it a couple more times. He has shown me, he has shown me, oh man, oh man what is, is good and what the Lord requires of me. Again, he has shown me, he has shown me, oh man, oh man what is, is good and what the Lord requires of me. But to do justly, to do justly and, to and to love mercy, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The last time, He has shown thee, He has shown thee, oh man, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. He has shown me, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Some of you, again, that might be a first time for you. Some of you, it might be an old one for you, but I want to encourage you that scripture is a powerful scripture, and I hope that you'll hold on to that. At this time, Hannah's going to sing for us, and then we're going to have a message tonight on faith, the faith of Noah, and some things that we can apply ourselves as well, the faith of Noah. Their chains were fastened tight down at the jail that night. Still, one Cyrus would not be dismayed. Sing praises to the Lord, and prove that we will trust Him. Come and play, but first we will sing. Yeah. 
song. Truly, God wants to hear us sing. He knows those valleys and those challenging times uh, that we go through, and uh, what a wonderful uh, promise for each and every one of us to hold on to. Again, as we mentioned, every Sunday night, uh, emphasis on faith, and I think we all could agree uh, that certainly uh, faith is something that we all could uh, continue to um, uh, increase in. As many of you know, our theme this year is to increase, increase in wisdom. Our theme this month is to increase in prayer. And uh, certainly, how do we increase in faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we just want to continue to encourage you uh, to, re, uh, to remember to uh, stay in God's word. And uh, that's really where, uh, where our faith increases from. Noah, uh, in the book of Genesis, what a wonderful scripture, familiar scripture to many of us. Um, but this man, you want to talk about a man of faith. And Pastor before read our Bible blessing, and he really challenged us uh, specifically in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. And certainly a wonderful scripture. And then also verse number 1, as Pastor challenges us. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I uh, know many of you uh, are thankful and are hoping and knowing for sure that we have the hope of Jesus. You know, because of what Jesus did, yes, we know he died on the cross, but aren't you thankful that he didn't stay on that cross? He rose again, and that's where we can get our victory from. That's where we can get our hope from. And as you look into the book of Genesis, uh, we're going to read just quickly uh, the passage here, a few scriptures that we see in Genesis uh, chapter 6. I want to encourage you to turn there if you're not there uh, yet already, but Genesis chapter uh, six, and we're going to read uh, verses five through twenty-two. And if you're at home, I want you to go ahead and uh, follow along. I'm going to have you read some certain verses uh, with me as well. So be engaged, be interactive here, and uh, be a part of it. Uh, many times uh, when we uh, are here at our church services, we all stand and we uh, say these verses out loud, and it's wonderful to hear God's word. Uh, maybe you're at home and you want to stand as well. Feel free to do that. Uh, but we're going to read Genesis chapter 6 and verses 5 through 22. And in verse number 5, it starts off and it says, And God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Let's read verse eight together. But Noah found grace 
in the eyes of the Lord. I love this scripture. Let's say it one more time. Verse eight, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I just want to stop there. And through this challenging time in uh, our world today, I want to ask you this question. Are you finding grace? Are you finding grace in the Lord? What a powerful thought and question. Where do we get our grace from? Are you getting it from the Lord? Let's continue on. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion for which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height, height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in the cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall set on the side thereof with lower, second, third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I even, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Thou shalt be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of the cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou thee of all the food that is eaten, and then shall gather it to thee, and it shall be, it shall be for food for thee and for them. Read verse 22 with me. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would encourage each one of us tonight to continue to increase in faith. As we take these Sunday nights and we have these Sunday evening services, I pray, God, that it will be desire for each one of us to continue to hold on to the faith that we have in you. What a foundation. Thank you for the rock, the solid foundation that we have in you. Thank you for the obedience of Noah. Thank you for the lessons that we see. What a faith. What a faith. And I pray, God, that as believers, as Christians, that you would continue to encourage us through times that we're in, God, that we would continue to rally behind and grab hold of the wonderful faith that you have for each and one, each and every one of us. As we look at Noah tonight, I pray, God, that we will consider some, some things here tonight for us to hold on to and to learn from that we can take and apply to our lives to increase our faith. Thank you, God, for just your goodness to us and that we could have this faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Just want to take a few moments, and I found a couple statements on faith that I think will encourage you. Uh, as well. And then we're going to look specifically at Noah's faith, look at Noah's fear, and then we're going to look at Noah's family and some things on how we can learn and apply these. First statement I want to say is this. It says, let God's promises shine on your problems. What a powerful statement on faith. Let God's promises shine on your problems. This morning, as we mentioned earlier, 930, we were just, people were just sharing uh, one after another here uh, on uh, on the on our live uh, uh, time here, and just one after another, Bible promises, Bible promises, Bible promises. And when problems come, I want to encourage you to let God's promises shine on those problems. Here's another one: God never said that the journey would be easy, but He did say that the arrival would be worthwhile. Amen. And what a powerful thought that that is! God never said that the journey would be easy, but He did say that the arrival would be worthwhile. And what a what a powerful statement by Max Licato. Uh, and, and I just love that. Love that statement. Here's another one. If you believe in a God who controls the big things, you have to believe in a God who controls the little things. 
It is we, of course, to whom things look little or big. Let me read it one more time. If you believe in a God who controls the big things, you have to believe in a God who controls the little things. It is we, of course, to whom those things look little or big. Let me ask you this question. How big is your God? How big is your God? The same God that has gotten us through Many, many, many times. The same God that has, has got Moses and, and, through, and through the Red Sea. And, and as you consider all the miracles of the Bible, that's the same God that we serve today. That's the same God that we have faith in today. And I want to ask you that question one more time. How big is your God? As we look in these scriptures, we see specifically the Bible says in Genesis chapter two and verses five through six. Turn there real quick. I believe many of you were just at Genesis six, but Genesis chapter two. Just go back a couple uh, chapters, and we know during this time it was evil time. It, it says that it 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 discouraged, if you will, or uh, uh, brought some challenge to the Lord, and and he knew that he needed to do something. And I'll tell you what. With this coronavirus, I want to just encourage all of us that we have a God who's in control. He's doing something. I heard today there was all on social media, just church service after church service after church service after church service, one after another, after another, after another. And uh, I just pray that God will continue to use this to draw us closer to him, not only as Christians, but then God can also use this in folks, unbelievers that can come to see their need of Christ. But in Genesis chapter two and verse number five and verse number six, the scripture says this, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man uh, to till the ground. And then it says, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Think about this. It had not rained on the earth, yet Noah was now preaching that it was going to rain. I mean, you want to talk about people thinking that he was crazy. No, it hasn't rained. And now you're saying that it's going to rain. Oh, you got a message from God. Could you imagine the thoughts and the negativity and the ridicule that he must have received, the voices that he must have heard? And here God is saying, Noah, Noah, I want you, I want you by faith, Noah, being warned of, of God, as we see of things not seen as yet. This here shows Noah's strong and powerful and powerful faith. Why did Noah do this? Think about that. He did it because of his faith in God. Why do we do what we do? Why are we here tonight? Why is Mainland Baptist Church, do we have a Sunday night service? Because of our faith in God. We want to continue to increase in faith. As we said earlier, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It just gives us another opportunity to be able to grow in faith. The God whom he already knew as his savior gave him instruction. He gave him instruction. God revealed to him things that the human eye could not see. And he believed what God said. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe the things that God says? There's a song a wonderful chorus that I remember hearing from our pastor for, for many years. And we'll sing it. It's a wonderful chorus uh, here at our church. But only believe, only believe that all things are possible. Only believe. And it's a wonderful, wonderful chorus for all of us to hold on to. Here we see Noah believed God. God revealed to him these things that the human eye could not see. Spiritual eyes. God has given each one of us spiritual eyes. And I want to continue to encourage you to tap in to those spiritual eyes. You and I are called upon every day, moment by moment, to exercise faith in our Redeemer and to live for things we cannot behold with the human eye. Number one, first and foremost, as we look at this tonight, we see Noah's faith. Noah's faith. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to put your name. I want you to put your name in there instead of Noah. I want you to put your name in there. Say it right now. I'm going to start Mike's faith. Go ahead. I know it's awkward. I know it's weird. If you're there watching, go ahead, say it. Put your name in it and, 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 and say it. Ready? Mike's faith. We've got a few folks here that are joining in with us as well. Say it again. You ready? Mike's faith. I don't know who's watching, but I want to encourage you to say it one more time. Mike's faith. Put yourself right in it. Believe. 
as Noah believed, believe that our God is in control of what's going on right now. Have faith and know that God is in complete control. Noah's faith, Mike's faith, your faith, hold on to that first and foremost. Next we see, as we uh, hold on to uh, this scripture, I want you to quickly just turn over to Hebrews. Would you turn to Hebrews um, and verse number 11? Pastor was uh, referring back to that earlier, but I want you to go back to this uh, here, and I want you to see Noah. Not only did he have faith, but I want you to see what was this warning that we can see specifically in verse number seven? Let's say it together. Hebrews 11 and verse number seven. If you have it and you found it at home, would you go ahead and either write it down or read it with us together? You ready? By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Why did Noah have this fear? God warned Noah. We may ask, what did Noah think about this warning? He believed it. If we can hear Noah preaching in his day, we would hear him say, God has warned me. Judgment is coming. If you do not believe, you will perish. When you hear someone maybe preaching about the coming judgment, how do you respond? How do I respond? Remember this in 2 Peter 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. If you're here and you are 100% secure of knowing that you have accepted Christ as your personal savior, what a wonderful truth and promise. God promises he's going to come back. He's going to come back. And it says specifically, it will come. He will come as a thief in the night. We don't know when. We don't know when. Aren't you thankful that you have the security of knowing that you have Jesus Christ? When he comes back, that we will be together with him. The fear of God, here's the thought. The fear of God relieves us from all lesser fears. Here's the thought. Fear, not necessarily scared. Fear all. Being in all of who our great God is. God is going to judge this world. We know that. The Bible talks about the only place of safety is in the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom that ark was a specific type. Noah's primary fear was not coming, uh, if you will, from wrath, but it was coming in the fear of God. When we fear the Lord, as we should, we are not frightened by the circumstances of this world. Hold on to that thought again. When we fear, when we fear the Lord, as we should, we are not frightened by the circumstances of the world. Let's talk about the circumstances real quick. Could we agree that many times when circumstances come, and I'll be the first one to put my hand up, when challenging times come, when circumstances come, it is very easy to focus on the circumstances instead of the God of the circumstances. It's been said of an eagle that when the eagle knows that a storm is coming, that eagle will rise above the storm and that eagle will just get its wings and 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 and, and fly its wings out and just coast. It, that eagle will just coast above the storm. And you know what? It's a wonderful example that all of us can have when the storms of life come, when the circumstances of life come. Hey, let's allow God to get us up above those storms. Let's allow God to get us up above those circumstances and just coast on God's wings. If you're going to coast. That's a good thing to coast on, coasting on the wings of God. So we see first and, for, first and foremost, Noah's faith. Put your name in there again. You ready? Mike's faith. Go ahead. Do it again. Mike's faith. And then we see Noah's fear. Not a fear of, of, of necessarily being scared, but a fear of who God is. In the fear of the Lord, the scripture say in Proverbs, is strong confidence. Proverbs 14, 26. And his children shall have a place of refuge. If you want to know how you can have strong confidence, we need to be in the fear of God. Not being scared of who God is, but being in awe of who he is. Think about it. The same God who spoke the world into existence is the same God that we get to communicate with on a daily basis. The same God that driving five miles from here, we can go into the Atlantic Ocean and see the, the magnificence of it. That same God 
is the same God that wants to have a fellowship with you and me. Being in awe of that God. Noah's fear. Put your name in there. You ready? Mike's fear. Go ahead. Try it again. Go ahead. Put your name in there. You're like, this is weird. This is awkward. I'm at home talking to a screen. You think it's weird? At least I have a few people here. I'm looking straight at a phone and I'm looking right at a laptop and I'm and I'm, I'm speaking in and saying Mike's fear. All right. So just as awkward for me, but I hope that you're getting the point here tonight. Go ahead and say it one more time. The first one is this. Put your name in it. Mike's faith. Second one, Mike's fear. And then the third one that we see here tonight is we see Noah's family. Noah loved his family like we should love our families. The Bible says, by faith, Noah, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. The way he led his family, as we can see, challenged the world. When a man follows Christ, It is a condemnation to those about him who are not following Christ. Noah loved his family. And it's a reminder for all of us as we're continuing to hold on to faith to love the family that God has given to us. Listen, I know some of you have probably been through more challenging times and difficult times and have a different story. Maybe with your family, I've been thankful uh, to be able to be brought up in a Christian home. Uh, Many of you know the story of my mom. She was not uh, able to be brought up in a Christian home. And I'll tell you what, if if, if you have not been brought up in a Christian home, yes, it probably gives uh, and have seen some some pretty challenging things. It probably gives some an excuse, but I don't encourage you. Don't make an excuse. I want to encourage you to take some of those trials and use those for God's goodness. And I'm thankful for the testimony and the story of my mom and some of the difficult things that she had gone through and seen uh, with her family. But I'm thankful that it didn't. It wasn't something that made her bitter, but it was something that when she got saved, it made her better. And what a reminder for all of us. So some of you that maybe have had a a challenging time, difficult time. I want I want you to allow God to be your father. I want you to allow God to be, as we know in the scriptures, we can cry out and say, Abba, Father. And I want you to to not allow that to make you bitter, but allow to make you better. And get closer to God and get closer to your heavenly father. And, 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 and maybe some of you are holding on to some regret and some things with your family. Hey, forgive them like Christ has forgiven us. Well, you don't know that's much easier said than done. You're exactly right. That's why we can't do it. We got to ask God to be able to help us to be able to bring that forgiveness. And then for those of us who God has blessed with family, I want to encourage us, cherish it. Cherish the family. Cherish your family. Tonight, maybe send a message. Call that child, call uh, uh, that that uncle, that aunt, uh, that grandparent, whatever it is, a teen, a child watching tonight. Uh, Let your parents know how much you love them. Maybe tonight, write them a note and give it to them. Figure out a way to to secretly give it to them. I don't know, maybe put it under their pillow or something. When they go to bed, they they grab that note. Or maybe in the middle of the night, go put it on the refrigerator or put it uh, on a door, somewhere that they can see it. Folks, let's take advantage of the wonderful uh, families that God has given to us and not take it for granted. And we see here Noah's love. He loved his family. He knew that they needed to be in the ark. Likewise, the truth is this. We need to tell loved ones. We need to tell loved ones that God is real and that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Think about this. There was only one door, one way, one escape, one boat, and Noah got his family on board. This morning, in this morning's message, we talked about We're in the boat together. We're in the boat together. And tonight we see Noah's faith. We see Noah's fear. And then we see Noah's family. Put your name into those three as we uh, think on this, just this quick little reminder message for us tonight. You put your name in them. You put your name in them. Put this to application tonight. You put your name in it. Here we go. We'll all say it together. Mike's faith. Mike's fear. Mike's family. Let's say it again. Mike's faith. Mike's fear, Mike's family. Let's have that faith. Let's have that faith that God desires, just like Noah had. Let's have that fear in the fear of the Lord, a strong confidence. Let's be in awe of who our great God is, how big he is, how majestic he is, how wonderful that he is, how almighty that he is, how all-powerful that he is, how all-knowing that he is. Are you in awe? Am I in awe? How big? 
is our God. And then lastly, our family. If you have some lost uh, loved ones, I want to encourage you. Pray for them. Look for ways and opportunities that you can share God's love. For those of you that you do know your family and they have accepted Christ, I, I want to encourage you to reach out to them, love on them. Let's, this is, there's no better time for us to be able to just love the families that God has given to you. I want to give you one more statement on faith. It says this, if you are listening to the roar, you're going to miss the whisper. And all around us today, there is a lot of noise. There is a loud roar. There is a big fear. And I want to encourage you, if you're listening to the roar, you're going to miss the whisper. I don't know who made that statement, but I really like that statement. And I think it's certainly appropriate for this time of where we're at today. Let's not, whis let's not miss that whisper, God's still small voice. Let's not miss it because our fear is greater than our faith. But our faith should be greater than our fear. This morning we talked about being in the boat together. Together we trust. Together we looked at the scripture in Psalm 46. Be still. Not only together we trust. Not only together be still. But also together we rest. Also together we continue to be faithful, thankful for a God that has been so faithful to each and every one of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, these scriptures. Thank you for Noah. Thank you for the faith that you gave him. What a wonderful reminder for all of us to continue to have faith. God, you have called each one of us as Christians, as believers, to continue to be obedient to you, to continue to have faith in you. You certainly didn't call us to something as big as what Noah experienced. But Lord, we can see in the scripture, it says by faith, by faith. And I pray, God, that you would increase our faith. We know the only way it's going to happen is by time with you and your word. Thank you for this reminder tonight from Noah. I pray, God, that you will continue to increase our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. At the end of every service, as we mentioned this morning, we have what we call an invitation, a time to invite folks to be able to come forward and to pray and just ask God whatever it was that he was speaking to you on your heart. And I want to encourage you, Hannah's going to play a song for us at this time. And uh, just there in your homes, have a time of prayer. Maybe you're, uh, it's just you. Uh, maybe you're with some family. I want to encourage you, have a time of prayer right now. Whatever it is that God showed you tonight, first and foremost, I want to encourage you to pray that we will have the faith like Noah had. Take just a few moments here tonight and ask God to continue to increase your faith.
Hopefully you're able to have a little bit of time of prayer. And uh, right before we have Pastor come and close our service, we, Hannah was playing that chorus. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Only believe, only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Only believe. Mark 9, 23 says, all things are possible to him that believeth. We're going to uh, close with that and then Pastor will come. And uh, close in prayer for us. But do you believe it? Do you believe it? That all things are possible uh, for those who believe. We'll sing this chorus if you know it. Sing it with us. If you don't, uh, you'll learn it. It's a very simple chorus. And we'll sing it together. Just a reminder for you that Wednesday night we'll be here and uh, again we'll be having some time of prayer. And if you have any requests, we want to encourage you to add those in uh, as well as some praise as well. Uh, and we'll have a wonderful time just getting into some prayer. And then again, the message on Wednesday night, how to pray uh, 30 minutes a day. Also, if you're watching here and uh, maybe you're unsure of what uh, salvation is, maybe you're unsure, 100 percent sure that you're going to spend that eternity in heaven forever. I want to encourage you to reach out to us, send us a direct message, uh, give us a call at the church office, um, and we would love to be able to show you, have somebody call you, reach, and look into God's word, how you can know 100% sure of uh, the, the life's greatest, greatest choice and decision ever to be made to accept Christ and know for sure that you're going to spend eternity in heaven for sure. We're going to have Pastor come, and uh, he will close uh, in prayer for us here tonight. Trust you took notes and remember and remind yourselves about uh, this faith message that we heard tonight. Let us pray. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 